All right, guys, we've got a little modification we're going to make up underneath here. Um, I've got a lubrication point that's difficult to get to. I was going to make up an adapter for an oil can, a little 90-degree adapter that we could come up and, uh, and lubricate that with. But we know what happens with adapters over time and, and little things we make up, they get lost. So what I'm going to do is make up a, a little manifold block that we'll just bolt onto here, 90-degree pouring that we can come directly on. Um, I could have fitted something like this, but... To me, it's not sympathetic to the finish of the machine. Um, I always like to put a bit of flair in the machines, and uh, if you had the opportunity to get a bit of your own personality in the machine to, to get those lines um, looking right, so everything looked very, very pleasing to the eye. I, I call it fine scale. <laughs> Even on big, big machine designs, um, I like to put a bit of flair in if, uh, if you had the opportunity. Um, I always used to bang on with my designs about lubrication. We need to make lubrication points as accessible and as easy as possible to work with. And if we could put a manifold block where we could do all the lubrication at one location, it may have been a one action pump, it, it may have been a, a, a small mod motor that, uh, that ran on a pump to, to lubricate. Whatever we could do to make it as easy as possible to lubricate that machine for the uh, for the greaser or the fitter. So uh, it's... Uh, I find that absolutely critical in design and it sort of gets left behind as a bit of an afterthought, a little bit like guarding. Um, you need to try and make sure that you incorporate that from the word go into your design. So um, we're going to break this down so I can get access into here. We can get this drilled and tapped to, uh, to get this little manifold mounted up. And uh, we're just about done then with, uh, with our bells and whistles that we wanted to put onto this uh, onto the slotting head. Uh, the last thing we'll need to do, obviously, is the uh, is the guard, but uh, we'll get that uh, done down the track. All right, guys, we'll see you over in the mill. All right, guys, this is our little oiling point here that's underneath the uh, the slideways that uh, makes it difficult to get to. And as I mentioned, we were going to make up a little 90-degree adapter to go on the end of the oil can, but as we said, those little adapters tend to get lost over time. So we're going to make up a little manifold right angle porting on it and uh, we'll bolt that into place with a couple of M4s or M5s, probably M4s, little bikes. I've got a little bit of work to work around some of these other fastening sets here so just got to be careful that we don't impinge into those. And once again following on the theme of making this whole thing from scrap, that's our little bit of uh, rolled edge off a bit of flat that we use for making up our clamp for our, uh, our digital indicator. So we're going to make up our little manifold out, up out of that. So we'll rough that out on the, uh, on the bandsaw and uh, We'll get started. Um, we'll get this stripped down so that I can get in access into there to, to get that drilled and tapped as well. Um, as you see, this is a, a very, very tight keyed fit inside here, so it's a bit of a pain to get it out, but um, we'll get it out and uh, we'll get sorted. All right, guys, we'll catch you in a minute. All right, guys, we're back here with a little sketch we're going to use to uh, make up this little uh, manifold block out of scrap. So uh, it's a fairly straightforward block. We've got a machine up, we've got some holes that we need to drill and counterbore for the M4. So I've got either cap screws, we've got a hole that we'll need to drill and ream for the uh, for the oiler to fit, and a little bit of porting to be done on that as well. And I've also done a quick little uh, dimension set there for the drilling and tapping that we need to do on the plate to be able to um, mount that manifold into place. And it's funny, I've had a couple of comments from viewers saying that uh, it's not a cam at Battler video unless there's a, uh, a CAD drawing involved, and uh, I must admit I've, I've been designing for over 30 years now. Um, to me it just becomes second nature. So whether I'm doing it as a, uh, a 2D uh, or whether I'm doing it uh, as a 3D, um, it's, uh, it's very, very natural and very, very quick for me to, uh, to knock my ideas out uh, using the, uh, the CAD programs. Unfortunately, it's a profession I'm not in anymore because of the state of the uh, Australian industrial climate, manufacturing climate. We don't need uh, designers anymore. So. I've had to evolve and, and move into uh, into new employment areas, so a uh, bit of a sad indictment on the, on this country when we uh, when we don't have that manufacturing capability and we can't utilise the the uh, the talent that uh, that we had or we once had. Unfortunately, we're never going to get that talent back again. All right, guys. So uh, I've got this uh, starting to be roughed out at the moment. So uh, we'll continue on with that, get that knocked down, and uh, we'll start putting the detail into it.
All right, we're going to um, create our flat bottoms for our socket head cap screws. So I'm going to use my um, pre-ground flat bottom drill that I've got. So I go through with the standard um, pointer drill to get the, uh, the hole started, and then we'll finish it out with the uh, with the flat bottom. All right, done. We'll set up now to do the uh All right, we'll uh we'll drill and ream the 6 mil for the uh, for the oiler. Um, I have mentioned in the past when I'm reaming, I don't like to use chucks if I can help it. Um Drill chucks because they do tend to wobble a little bit. They're, they're not exactly center. That's why I tend to use uh, the collets, uh, ER32 collet sets. Uh, at least I can make sure that that's dead true, and we're minimising any of the run out and the over cutting on that uh, on that hole. Right, we'll get this drilled through. All right, all done. We'll just do the, the cross port now and uh, we'll set this up in the grinder and give it a little bit of a lick and uh, we'll be ready to mount. All right, all ported and complete. So we'll pop that on the grinder and give that a little bit of a lick over to give it a good finish. And uh, we'll drill and tap uh, into our uh, into our manning plate next. Well, that was a little bit exciting, wasn't it? Projectiles flying around the workshop. All right, let's uh, come back onto it again. All right, special note to self. Make sure magnetic chuck is engaged before grinding. All right, so that's our little block all made up. Now I haven't ground the bottom of this. I want to leave the machine face on there somewhere for the um, for the gasket uh, material to uh, to come into or lock into anyway. I'm going to use the master gasket, the Loctite product, to uh, to seal this rather than doing a counter ball with an O-ring. And we'll see how that goes. All right, I'll fit in the uh, little oiler next and. Uh, it's ready to go on. Oh no, we've got to drill and tap first. Yep, so I'll drill and tap that plate first then we can get this bolted up. All right guys, I'll see you in a tick. Righto, so we've got our uh, master gasket, <coughs> Loctite master gasket in place. We've got our little uh, oiler punched into place. And all we're going to do now is fill off our little cap that 
Looks like I need a cap head screws and we'll see how that's going to look. And that's it all in place. So it'll take about 20 minutes for that, um, that to go off. But that'll allow us to get access into that now and uh, feed oil up into that uh, into that slide ray. Into that side slide ray, so that's great. All right, guys, we'll get everything uh, finished off and uh, we'll see how it all looks uh, fully mounted up. So you can see that little manifold block up inside there. And... Uh, so it's very, very easy to get to. And pump away. So we can get that slideway filled up with oil. Now we've got oil access all the way around that entire box section now. So very happy with that. All right, the last thing we need to do is the belt guard. So we've got a belt guard that we've uh, that I've already designed up. I just need to fabricate that up and get that mounted into the body so that gives us the protection from that uh, from that spinning belt. We're not gonna get caught up in it. Um, there is one other thing that we do need to make up and that is a lifting rig or jig that I can use to lift and get this into place very easily without having to do uh, too much mucking around. So I'll have a bit of a think about how I'll uh, design that up. But, uh, at the moment, we've got uh, all those bells and whistles finished off on it. It's come up really, really nice. Um, it all matches in beautifully with the uh, with the existing gear that's there. And uh, as I said, it, uh, it keeps its appearance the same all the way through. And uh, keeps it sympathetic to, uh, to the finish that we've got on there already. All right, guys. So uh, that'll be it for now. As I said, I'll, I'll come back. We'll do a, a little guard for this. We'll TIG that up. I'm going to go over to my brother's uh, workshop and, uh, and we'll get that happening. And as I said, we'll come up with a, a lifting arrangement for it. All right, guys, we'll catch you soon.